Alabama's still number one in the playoff rankings and won't face much of a challenge to their supremacy this week against the Citadel, even still. Nick Saban says he has no plans to sit to a tongue of Viola, their quarterback who has been playing through a knee injury for weeks and limped off the field and had to leave Bama's game last week against Mississippi State. I think it's a bad look for Nick Saban uh, if Tua plays this week. I'd normally defend Nick Saban at all costs. I don't see why you would play Tua uh, against the Citadel. I, I, I think if something goes wrong here and he, he somehow got hurt, uh, it could damage Nick Saban's reputation. Uh, look, I could hand the ball off this week against the Citadel. Hmm. Uh, and, and Alabama's going to win by three or four touchdowns. They don't, and I know Jalen Hurts is hurt, but they don't need to be playing to him. Uh, I disagree with that. Um, the building blocks of Alabama's success uh, is, is not just talent-based. It's the culture. And in a culture where you're telling all these players it's a great game of skill, but it's a greater game of will, uh, one thing we can't show is favoritism. One thing we can't show is exclusivity, and even an injury, because favoritism comes in many forms. Everyone's saying, well, hey, if the guy's hurt, just sit him down. But it's with a caveat. He's hurt because we're playing the Citadel. Hmm. In a culture where I tell everyone, never disrespect your opponent, never take a day off, always respect and trust the process. And, and you're going out there preaching that. And then a guy's like, if this were a playoff game, a game of high importance, I would play. And he's like, this is a game of high importance. Back to the culture and the building block. So I had to learn that behavior. I was on 10 years in the NFL of non-championship teams. And when I start seeing parallels between a, a Saban and I see it between a Belichick, it's a game where we're saying you are talented. If you buy in, you can do greater things than you ever could imagine. But none of you guys are special without all of you guys. And I think that's why he's going to make sure he plays. It's interesting you bring up Bill Belichick because actually, that's actually where I was going to go and, and, and draw a parallel of the question always was, why does New England always beat Peyton Manning and the Colts? Remember that? Mm -hmm. You know, New England just owned them. And it was like, well, is it Brady better than Manning? Or what's good? Is it the roster? But the Colts have Marvin Harrison. What's going on? Well, you could talk about the approach of the organization back in the day, and that approach was that New England very rarely, if ever, that I can remember, ever rested players at the end of the year. Say Guess it. what the Colts always did the last couple of weeks of the regular season? We're going to rest our players so that we can be ready for the stretch run. So the mentality of the New England Patriots was far different than the mentality of the Indianapolis Colts. Well, you can make an argument that the mentality of Alabama is very different from the mentality of any other program in college football right now. Having said that, and I do believe that that's true, okay? I believe in old-school coaching. My dad was a coach. He was a Marine. Like, I get it, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the other side of the coin, though. Alabama, I don't think, is going to win the national championship without Tua. They didn't. They weren't going to win it last year without Tua. That's why he had to bring him off the bench as a true freshman to play against Georgia in the second half. So, Jason, I'm with you as well. If he goes out there and takes one wrong hit from a Citadel player – or steps wrong with his knee and something goes down and now all of a sudden they're down to the third option at quarterback and they get beat by Auburn. They get beat by Georgia. They're not into the playoff. Guess what it is? A failure for Alabama because there's only one standard for the Tide and that's winning the national championship. So I'd see both things as being true. The reason they're in this position all the time is because of their culture right. and yet the ultimate goal is to win the chip and you're only doing it with number 13 at quarterback. I, I would manipulate the culture in a sense that Bill Belichick doesn't get to play Citadel. He, he doesn't get any buys during the season. In AFC East? He doesn't get... <laughs> what? It ain't the, the Citadel. Jets? It ain't the Citadel. <laughs> the Jets? It's, it's I not, like it's I like not the Citadel. Uh, let's and, compare and then, the Citadel to the Jets. <laughs> no, no, but kidding. Joel, on to your other point, though, what I think Alabama really needs to be concerned about, this version of Tua, they may not be good enough to win the national championship. He, he's certainly not playing to the level he was earlier in the season. And then you could make the argument it's because he's banged up. Yeah, no, because he's banged up, this kid on a bad knee, I don't think can lead them to a national championship. And so if they have any chance here to sit this guy down and rehabilitate him just for a week, they should take advantage of it. Uh, and, and, and I'm just sorry 
for if I'm Tua, and, and Tua may want to go out there and protect his Heisman status or whatever, but someone has to be counseling him on a bigger picture. He needs to sit down, you know, forget the culture. He needs to do what's right for himself long term. And 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 someone, Nick Saban to me would be setting a bad price. Because I'd actually do believe in favor. You don't treat everybody the same. You treat everybody fairly. Oh, I and, and that. So, yeah. And so what's fair for Tua may not be what's may not be the same for someone else on that Alabama roster. Look, I'm not gonna go fairy tale and three little pigs, but uh, every culture is constructed differently. So the Dallas Cowboys, uh, when they won three or four, believed in favoritism. Oh, did they? Um, they had a White House. Right. They, you know, they had everything going on, and we have learned over time how. Uh, that construction wasn't the best. It, was, it wasn't a, a brick. Uh, and, and you look at the culture of the Saban and you look at the culture of the Patriots and you start to realize that favoritism doesn't work. I remember Tom Brady got reprimanded for having his own parking spot. And I was like, God, is it that petty up in New England? And you know what it does? It reinforces to everyone that we're all in this together. And in football, the ultimate team sport, uh, I get it. You could get some perks, but at the same time, if I got to go out there and play, there's a D lineman who has a dislocated finger. There's an offensive lineman who has a hyperextended elbow, and he's going to get it against the Citadel. Tua, what's your not Tua. Now, if that, if that guy that you're pointing at, I agree. Let me play devil's advocate. Let's say I'm, okay. I'm the defensive lineman that's, that's banged up, and I'm, I'm, playing with, I'm playing hurt, right? But I know 13's my ticket to a ring. Right. You know, and I'm like, listen, I'll play banged up against the Citadel. You sit down. Right, because because you're a more important piece. Now you could you can and do generally have that on teams where players understand which which players need to be more healthy than others who can just play through whatever and they can be kind of like Mack trucks. I, I will say this about about this version of Alabama: the way that their offense played last week against Mississippi State, that is a huge crack in their foundation because teams with really good defenses like Clemson, Georgia. Michigan, even Notre Dame, now all of a sudden say, oh, okay, there's a path. There's a path to holding Alabama to 21, 24 points. And now we can be in a one possession game late in the fourth quarter. They haven't played a tight ball game in the fourth quarter all year. In fact, two has thrown one pass in the fourth quarter this entire season. What I would be trying to do if I was any one of those teams in the future of this season is get them into a tight ball game late, right? And, and one of the ways you do that is you get to a not quite 100%. So... If you're asking me, which Nick Saban's not, hmm. I'm resting it. <laughs> yeah, y'all playing, y'all playing blackjack the way I play it right now, and, and that is forget house rules and forget the standard and the culture that he has in place, which is cemented. I have a feel right now. I'm looking in the, in, in the short term in a short mindset. I think that this is the best thing for us, and I agree with that. Except that's not what they're built on. So why change your philosophy? Oh, I, I, but this look. feels like hitting on 17 when the dealer's got a face card. <laughs> no, <that's laughs> right? right? I mean, like... Careful. Or the dealer's showing a three. Careful. You know what I mean? Careful, brother. Like, I, I feel, I feel <laughs> yeah, good yeah, yeah, yeah. about standing put. Thank Be you, careful, Joel. Brother. I don't you think bet. Joel knows a damn thing about that. Yeah, I just know I'm playing against him next time. <laughs> Maybe. It would be a three, right? Of anti he's showing a three. I'm standing with Pat. What do you know? He's going to go over. Tackle. Warren know. Central, great. <laughs> Notre know. Dame, great. Uh, Sheldon Day in the house. A lot of greats. I'm just going to stick. Darnell Smith. Stick to college football.